Colombo, we're going to go to the factory to see them making the pottery. I come out a lot to see how everybody's getting on and to make new things and um, a new product, work on new products with them because it's much better to work out here than it is at home. guys who run the factory, they have amazing integrity. Um, I trust them completely and it's very nice because that's how I feel a business should be. I actually think, although I pay them to make it and we're two separate businesses, I feel we very much are looking at it in the same way. And my business depends on them and their business depends on me. And I think that's really, you know, how you'd like to think that business was, could be run. And you do wish when people bought things that they actually could see how they did it because people just don't think about it when they buy something. They just look at it and take it for granted. It's a very, very difficult process because it's really a studio process, but we've tried to turn it into a factory, you know, to make higher production. It's not really a factory process, but the factory here is more like an enormous studio. It's, it's very, very unusual. And I genuinely don't think there's probably anywhere else in the world who could have done it. Some of the techniques that were used have been not used in the ceramic industry for a lot of years. Most of the companies had shut down and so we had to relearn most of these processes, some of, some of them from scratch and we had to invent some of the processes ourselves because what worked in England didn't work in Sri Lanka. But we managed to uh, do a good job and Suzy is very happy with the quality right now and we hope to continue for a long time. Nobody who hadn't been to a ceramics factory would realise how many processes went into one piece of pottery. So it all starts in the studio. It's amazing to see something that you've drawn on a piece of paper take shape in front of your eyes. Once we're happy with the shape, um, the moulds are made, ready for production. And then begins the very lengthy process of making the finished piece. Everything here is done by hand. Once the clay piece is ready, it goes to be fired. I can never believe what a complex art it is loading a kiln. To make it economic it has to be filled exactly and it's like putting a huge jigsaw together. In total there will be three separate firings. That's three loadings and unloadings of the kiln. Once the firing is finished the kilns are unloaded and they're ready for the next stage for the decoration. For our particular pottery everything we produce has to be slipped it before decoration. Uh, this in itself is actually incredibly skilled. After the dipping, the, the decoration can begin. We do different types of decoration. The, the shapes we do, like the strawberries or the stars or the hearts, we create our shapes with a sponge. This has to be cut out by hand. An incredibly talented girl here who cuts the shapes. This is something they'd never tried before. I'm amazed how well they've learned to do it. We've been around since 1968. So my father started it uh, with just four people in a small shack and now uh, we have about 300 people working with us. And since we are that old, we have mothers and daughters working side by side and some people who've been with us for over 35 years. All the dots are dropped on by hand and it's extraordinarily difficult to get them all in the right place and the right size. Everything we produce is banded and this is all done by hand as is any added detail will be painted on by hand at the end. Once the decorating is finished, everything has to go back in the kiln. For our production, this is a necessary extra firing. One of the things that's so difficult with decorating ceramics is that the colour that you put on at this stage has got nothing to do with the colour that will come out at the end. After the second firing comes the glazing and the final firing. Once a year within the Midaya group we have a sporting event and uh, everyone looks forward to it because they want to win at their specific event like cricket, netball or volleyball. So uh, they start practicing about two months before the event and then they choose the best out of the lot and then they compete against each other. And even though the prizes are not uh, anything great, it's the prestige of having won that event that year. Suzy comes to Sri Lanka about two to three times a year. She stays about uh, a week with us. Uh, stays uh, mostly at the painting and decorating section and comes up with new decoration styles, new designs and uh, spends a little bit of time at the studio as well coming up with new shapes. So whenever she comes up with uh, uh, about 20 different designs she then picks uh, the best out of those and then puts it into production and it's really satisfying when uh, 
when new designs or even an entire Swedish shipment uh, goes out because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good for the factory, it's good for the economy of Sri Lanka and uh, the employees as well. Thank you.